This week on The Gadget Show Web TV, Beyond's been out and about creating her very own video blog. And I've been testing out Casio's remarkable Exynim EXF1, which shoots stills at up to 60 frames a second. Plus, the latest in gadget tech news. Hello and welcome to The Gadget Show Web TV. I'm John Bentley. And I'm Dion South. Right, have any of you wanted to become a reporter or dream of being a television presenter maybe? Well, in that case, you need to stay tuned for this week's How To because I'm going to show you how to do your very own video blog. But first, I've been trying out Casio's Exilim EX-F1 camera that not only shoots an awful lot of still frames per second, it also does 1,200 frames per second of video for super slow-mo shots. This is the Casio Exilim EX-F1. It's a camera that's all about speed. Now, in a normal compact camera, when you press down the shutter and hold, you get a frame maybe every second or so. In an entry-level digital SLR, you get three or four frames in a second. In a professional SLR, you get about 10 frames a second. Well, on this, you get 60 frames if you press down the shutter and hold in a single second. You Twizzle around the dial to the 1 to 60 setting, press and hold the shutter, and you'll get to 60 frames in a single second, which will really help you get the exact moment when any particular piece of action happens. In this demonstration, I'm using it to capture the exact moment when I get hit by a small bucket of water. Once you've shot your burst, you're given the option of going through it and saving your favourite shot simply by uh, pressing the shutter button, or as I'm going to do, I'm going to save the whole thing for reference. And it's so clever, this camera, it even allows you to actually shoot something you've missed. Because if you're in that mode, you can hold the shutter button half down, and then when the action happens, say that brilliant goal or the crash of two cars, you simply press the shutter button and it automatically saves the last 60 frames. And you can alter the settings so that that 60 frames can be spread over the last second or over two or even three seconds. It's very clever. And there's even more. There's a slow motion video mode too. You can select 300 frames per second, 600 frames per second and incredibly 1,200 frames per second. Here's the action at 300 frames per second. Here it is at 600 frames per second. And here it is again at 1,200 frames per second. Note that the slower you go, the smaller the actual area of the video. You can also, on the menu, choose this 30 to 300 frames per second mode, where you can actually speed up and slow down the motion actually within the shot, which could be effective if you really want to emphasise some bit of action. Incredibly, it'll also shoot in high definition as well, and even shoot full st resolution stills while shooting high definition video. Though, I mean, it can't actually do all of this at once. For example, you can't shoot at uh, 600 frames per second in high definition. And there are a, are a few compromises. I mean, it is actually really quite difficult to use. You'll find yourself referring quite a lot to the instruction manual. Also, it's about as bulky as a digital SLR and about as expensive. But at the same time, it hasn't got the optical quality. I mean, the full frame, full resolution rate is actually only six megapixels, which is quite low by modern standards. However, the sort of things this does, you'd actually need really bulky professional equipment to do only a few years ago. Whereas with this, the possibilities are only limited by your imagination. So, if you need something to analyse your gymnastics performance or your golf swing, this could be a very astute buy. So, good bit of kit. I really love it. It's got lots more features than we actually mentioned in the video. I mean, I like the one where you can set it looking at a scene and it only records anything, it automatically records something when it detects movement. Say you could be looking at a bird's nest, when the bird takes off to fly, it automatically gives you a sequence, you wouldn't miss it. 
saves you waiting around for ages, mm. which, is, which is good. But my yeah. favourite is yeah. the HDMI connection. So you ah. can plug it straight into your big telly yeah. and watch your favourite videos ah. of the evening on your big screen. <laughs> it's got good. a really good zoom as well. Yes, yeah, so, so you might actually have one, do you think? Tempted? No, it's Why too not? big for my camera on a Saturday night with the girls. Ooh. Lipstick in the bag. Yes. It's not going right. to fit. Mm. Good shaky mm. face, though. Oh, thank you very much. <laughs> right, now for some news. First up, Sony have announced details of their new Veo TT series. It's a replacement for the Veo TZ series, which I thought was one of the best light yet powerful laptops going. This one has a carbon fibre chassis for extra lightness. You can specify it with 256 gigabytes worth of solid state hard drive. You can also specify it with a Blu-ray drive, which makes it the world's lightest laptop to come with one. And obviously you can view your Blu-ray discs on the 11.1 inch screen. Yes, and the aspect ratio is 16 by 9 instead of your usual 16 by 10. So it minimises the black lines when you're watching movies or television. And it's got, if I show you here, a HDMI port so you can plug it into your television and watch movies on a bigger screen if you wish. Yes, and the screen's also LCD backlit, so that should help even further with the energy efficiency. Now, Smart Parts have released the world's largest Wi-Fi digital photo frame at an astonishing 32 inches, so you can look at your favourite pictures on the massive screen. It's got a 16 by 9 widescreen with a resolution of 1366 by 768, so you can display your pictures in high definition. Now, because it's Wi-Fi enabled, it means you can stream your pictures directly from your computer without having to have cables all over the place. And it also comes with Windows Live Photo Gallery, so you can share your pictures online. Although you can actually also plug in a conventional memory card. It supports all the usual formats, CF, memory stick, SD and so on, and it'll play audio and video as well, which sort of begs the question of where televisions start and digital picture frames begin. And there's a remote control, so you can control it from the sofa. Although I'd recommend, obviously, you turn the sofa around to see your pictures. No news on price yet, but I can't imagine it will be cheap. Now, the Japanese are well known for cramming as much as possible into their mobile phones, everything from barcode readers to TV receivers, so it's no surprise that they've come up with the first car keys to be incorporated into a mobile phone. It's a collaboration between Nissan and the largest of Japan's mobile phone companies, NTT Docomo. Basically, it's a keyless entry system. When you walk up to your car, you don't need to bother with keys. You just press a button on your phone handset, the doors open. When you get in, again, you don't need your keys. You can press the starter button because it knows you're there. I think it's a, I think it's a really wonderful idea, but it'll obviously be no use for you because you drive a Citroen, not a Nissan. I know. And w what happens if you lose your phone? Because I misplace mine more than once in a day and you won't be able to get into your car or call the AA for help. And even if other manufacturers do adopt it, will it mean that when you change your car, you have to change your phone as well or vice versa? <laughs> Having said that, I think it's really good to have everything in one device myself. I'd really like this. Now it's time for one of Dion's how-to guides, guides that help you get the most from your gadgets. Yes, that's right, and this week it's all about video blogging. We live in a society where news stories are available on the web within minutes, and video content on just about any topic imaginable is available at the click of a button. So if you fancy making videos for the world to see, then the easiest way to do this is by making your very own video blog. Now, creating your own video blog isn't as hard as you might think. All you need is a video camera, some editing software and a website to post it on. So here's the simple gadget show guide to creating an online video blog. Now don't worry if you haven't already got a camcorder or one built into your mobile phone because there are plenty of cheap ones available on the market. I'm using the Flip Video camcorder and it stalls up to about 60 minutes worth of footage on its internal hard drive and comes with this handy USB connection so you can easily connect it to your laptop or computer and drag and drop the footage. Now the next thing you need to think about is the subject of your video blog what you're going to film and how and where you're going to film it. Yesterday I went to a product launch in London so I decided to take my flip to capture all the funky gadgets. I filmed loads of cool stuff, too much in fact. I've got nearly an hour's worth of footage on here which is way too much for a short video blog so I need to edit it. There are loads of video editing packages on the market but they can be pretty pricey. With a bit of hunting round you can find trial software such as Magic's Movie Edit Pro which is free for 30 days. Alternatively, Windows Movie Maker is pre-installed on both Windows XP and Vista, and it's really straightforward and user-friendly. So that's what I'm going to use to edit my blog. Once you've chosen your editing software, you need to import your footage so you can start working with it. My camera's plugged in, I just need to transfer the footage into Windows Movie Maker. It all appears here on screen, and you simply drag the clip you want onto the timeline, and then you can start editing. 
it's so easy to use. Just cut out all the bits and pieces that you don't want, like on this clip, which is far too long. There are heaps of other tools and features you can use too. You can add effects such as fades and dissolves in between clips, and you can even add music to make your video look extra professional. So when you've finished your masterpiece, you just need to find somewhere to post it. There are hundreds of sites that are dedicated to video blogs, so it's important that you find the right site for your subject. Your instructional cocktail making video won't get many hits on a football site. I've gone for the world's famous YouTube. You need to create an account which takes a couple of minutes and then simply follow the on-screen instructions to get your video up. Make sure you tag your video correctly so people can find it easily. And the more information you put up, the more likely it is that your video could appear at the top of the search. So there you have it. Video blogging is really fun and simple to do. That's all very good, but it seems very time consuming to me, and you've got to have lots and lots of content, so it's got to be a subject you're really passionate about, I well, think. Well, it wasn't that bad, it was a lot right? easier than I thought, but it, it did take quite a, a while in terms of editing and uploading. It took about half a day, plus the time it took me to get the content, so and if you've wow. got lots of time every week, then definitely Ooh. worth looking into, but maybe more of a hobby. I don't think I could keep it up every week. Right, and what would you be interested in seeing a video log about? Well, if any of you know how to master Guitar Hero, I'd really like to see a vlog on that because mm. um, I've got a really weak little finger. So going from three buttons to the fourth button is just not happening. Mm, so <laughs> something to improve your technique. Yes. Mm. Unfortunately, that's all we've got time for this week. But next week... I'll be showing you how to set up your very own wireless home network. And John's bringing you an exclusive first look at the new Nokia N96 and T-Mobile's G1. Don't miss it.